Welcome to the What Sold YouTube channel. This is where we just talk about things that we have sold uh, recently in our store. We are full-time resellers. We buy and sell. We show you those items, what they sold for, what we paid for them, and that sort of thing. Also, keep in mind, we have other channels. Rusty the Reseller, Postcard Planet, what sold podcast which is another channel that is the podcast video version of our podcast called the what sold podcast and you can find that on any of your streaming services uh, for listening to podcasts but without further ado let's get into it what did we sell the first item up today is this uh, bolo tie put it around your neck you cinch it up it's the shape of a boot, as you can see, with spurs, and it features a genuine piece of turquoise and a piece of coral. Um, I find jewelry <clears throat> incorporating these all the time. It would be often uh, would be described as Southwest style of jewelry. Um, a lot of time, Native American um, groups from that region of the country, the Southwest, <clears throat> would do artisan pieces, jewelry and whatnot. And this is a, a good example of that. Uh, it didn't have the artist's name or signature underneath of it, but it is made of sterling silver. Um, this came in with a lot of other jewelry. I was only a couple dollars into it, but it sold for $80. Next up, <clears throat> I featured this, or this was featured rather, on our Rusty the Reseller channel recently. Um, it was this tub of toys. And it was all taped off. It was bought at Goodwill. $20 for all the toys in there. I even saw that there were some that had, um, you know, were sealed and had never been uh, opened. <clears throat> but inside, a little bag inside of there, were a bunch of these miniature um, toys like this. This is, you can see, it's just, I mean, holding it between my tiny, uh, my fingers there, between my uh, index finger and my thumb. It's a tiny little monster truck, a Hot Wheel truck. Um, <clears throat> got several little things. Some were like G.I. Joe's. Uh, I got um, some hot, some other Hot Wheel things and other things. This was one of them. Again, I paid $20 for a table full of toys when I pulled them all out. This one item sold pretty quickly for $12. We also talked about a different pencils, vintage pencils and, and, and ink pens, mechanical pencils. They have value, so don't just pass by those little baggies for a dollar or 50 cents. Grab them up. If they have, if they're functional, like these are, if they have um, lead in them, if they have erasers, people will buy them and use them. Sometimes if they're old enough, they're for collecting purposes. Otherwise, they're just using them um, because they're cheaper than buying them new. <clears throat> and so these sold, uh, I bought, uh, five bags full of mechanical pencils, a dollar per bag. So it was five dollars for something like 50 pencils. And here you can see just six of those pencils sold for ten dollars. So I've already, I've already doubled my money on just a, a handful of them and I got several more to sell. Here were some gold pieces that uh, represented five grams worth of 14 karat gold. You see some earrings here, uh, a chain that's broken. I tried to um, repair it first because I would have sold it uh, as a functional piece of jewelry but because of the way that the um, the links were made uh, it was just very very difficult and I didn't have the time uh, to uh, to put that back together sometimes you can just like you know put links back together other times you end up having to solder and I would have had to solder this and if I had it would have been obvious and it would not have flexed like it was supposed to so I opted to put these all together into a lot and sell them for just scrap uh, gold so if you have a broken piece of jewelry that's gold or silver don't pitch it put it away in a little bag hold on to it until you have several grams worth um, and put it up if you don't know what it should go for then just start it at 10 or 20 dollars on auction just make sure that you put it in the title exactly what it is and there are gold buyers that will buy this every single time you do it <clears throat> this lock a sleigh maker it's a, a vintage lock I took a best offer of $22 uh, I bought a whole lot of antique tools at an estate sale a couple months back over a hundred tools three tools sold and made me all my money back so all of the things that are left is just money in my pocket now and this one uh, I bought a little tool like box carrying toolbox and inside of it was probably a hundred keys various keys and also somewhere around 15 vintage locks I was very happy about that um, and this again sold for $22 I've sold two or three of the other locks already also and I've got several more left to sell this was cool this was a 
you know, a bangle bracelet. It was flexible, and you can see it had a little push button here that would release the latch. It had a little hook and a little chain that went around it as well. Um, attractive enough to still be worn and used, but it was vintage. And also, if I come down here, you can see it represents, uh, it shows that it's 12 karat gold fill. It has a 12 karat purity gold filling around it. And then it had rhythm, and I guess that's the brand or the maker. <clears throat> Whatever it was, uh, this cost me $3 at a thrift store because that's about what I pay for costume jewelry or, or pieces like this, gold-filled pieces. Um, $50, it took about two weeks to sell. So gold-filled items, if you see it says GF on it or RGP, well, oftentimes you'll see uh, the backs of watches will say RGP, that stands for rolled gold plate. And people will buy that sometimes for the item itself, but sometimes to harvest the gold. Uh, this was, we talked about this on the Rusty channel also, but uh, this was a $3 purchase at a thrift store. It was in a bin of a bunch of old vintage watches. Most of them didn't work. Most of them were in bad shape. This was not unlike that, not in good shape. You can see the gold filling on the outside here has been worn down in certain spots. The crystal here is scratched and dented, but it's a Gucci brand watch. This watch in good condition, functional condition, sells for around $150. So I thought it'd be pretty easy to... Um, to, to invest $3 to see what happened. And uh, I started at about $50. I didn't uh, sell it on the first auction, so I put it up for $30 and it sold the next day. This was a beautiful little dish, uh, probably like a little jewelry uh, dish, um, but it was a, a Limoges uh, brand, which is like a French, I believe it's French, um, blue enamel, like a cobalt blue, and also this gold foil kind of painting around, and then the hand-painted picture here on the front. Uh, beautiful. Uh, you can see that's the lid, and it has, you know, it's an, um, a glazed dish. Um, bring up the bottom here. You can see uh, someone had handwritten on there numbers that represented probably whatever the mold was used or maybe when it was made. Um, but this is the real deal, authentic. Um, I was hoping for a little bit of a higher price here, but and I would have made it, uh, I would have sold it for more had I waited longer. But again, I just, I get stuff in all the time. I don't uh, want to hold on to things for more than 90 days if I can avoid it. And so I just keep lowering the price till it's sold. I took a best offer of $40 for it, and that was shipped out today. This is a, uh, a lot of just vintage or antique doll shoes of various sizes. I bought a very large bag of these from a thrift store probably six months ago, and very quickly I sold maybe a dozen different pairs individually out of this lot, uh, easily made all of my money back, got into profit. I had the rest of these left. It didn't make sense with what I thought I could get <clears throat> from all of these in order to put in the work and the research to list all of them individually. So I just threw them up in a lot. Uh, I was fine to get $17. I could move it. I've already made my money back. I paid uh, $5 for a big bag. I probably have done $50 or $60 in profit off of it before getting this sale. So, you know, it was a $5 uh, expense. I, I, did, I generated somewhere around $75 to $80 total uh, in revenue from it. Oh, this was really cool. <clears throat> this came in uh, a, a, a thrift store buyout. I bought a bunch of stuff, you know, like a full room's worth of things. And inside of there, they had just collected various vintage and antique things. This was the inside cover of an old scrapbook or an old, um, you know, maybe it could have been a postcard book, but it had this large glued in die cut picture of Santa Claus. And not just Santa Claus, but Santa Claus wearing like this kind of brown ruffly outfit that I'd never seen, you know, this sort of artwork for Santa Claus before. Usually he's in red. <clears throat> if you don't see him in red, he'll be in purple or blue or green. I've not seen one like this, but he's stuffing stockings here. He's got his bag full of stuff and he's putting a doll in there. Uh, really cool thing. I didn't really know what I would get from it. Uh, I, I, you know, this I was only a few cents into this, if you look at what I spent on everything. I put it on auction. Uh, I started at $50 just to see. I only got one bid, but it sold for $50, and that bid came very quickly. Like, as soon as it came on, I got the bid, and I thought, oh, here we go, and then uh, no more bids. <laughs> so $50 is still fine for me, though. It's uh, Let me go to the bottom here, and you can see what the back of it looked like. So you see, this was kind of like a like a faux leather sort of backing, um, and then quite large. I mean, 11... <clears throat> 11 inches, 11 and a half inches uh, long.
this was a really interesting postcard. It was a real photo postcard or an RPPC um, is kind of how they describe it. Um, you have a bunch of pieces of things that look like they'd been dug up <clears throat> from the ground. Nails, glass. Um, let's let me get the full view here. Yeah, so we've got some bullets, uh, unfired bullets, uh, still with powder in them. A bunch of coins, looks like um, some dimes, some uh, Liberty things, uh, various things, pocket knives, keys, a fish hook. Um, and up here it describes in more detail like what this is and where they came from uh, and a list of them. It says uh, July uh, 28th, 1909 is when this photograph was taken. So uh, somebody thought that was interesting. I certainly did. I didn't know if it would sell very quickly or for much because of that, that corner uh, break there. Um, but this was real, a real photo and it was uh, photograph paper. And uh, I paid a dollar for it, sold it for $14 in the first auction cycle. Here are a bunch of cufflinks. These are vintage cufflinks from the 1920s. They snap together when you're not using them to just for storage. <clears throat> and I don't know if this is meant to be an M or a W, but it's like, I guess like initials, it's monogrammed kind of uh, for somebody. And you can see this is what it looks like when it's open. I come across these from time to time. I usually buy them when I see them, especially if they're cheap, because even singles, like if I have a lot of, a bunch of individuals that don't have the partner, uh, those will sell sometimes. People use them for crafting, people uh, use them for collecting. Um, and sometimes they're made, they're gold filled, or they can't even be made of solid gold or silver. So you gotta keep a lookout for that. Uh, first auction cycle, I think I paid a dollar for a baggie of various ones. I had three or four sets in there uh, and then various individual ones. And the first sale on this one sold and I got all my money back and I'm into profit. These came in that same antique by a, a lot, tool lot that I bought at an auction a couple months back. Um, a bunch of wooden clamps that you screw and they would clamp together. Uh, Craftsman brand and uh, Jorgensen brand. Um, <clears throat> I would have kept these if I'd had use for them myself. I've got a bunch of clamps. I don't really need ones this size. I was hoping to get more like 60 or $70 out of this, but I guess there's just not as much of um, a demand for them, or maybe there's just a lot available. Um, but I put them on, I, I had them up as a buy it now for a while. Nobody bought them. So I put it up in auction and they sold for 44. Now here we have uh, a really cool lot of <clears throat> uh, real photo postcards of warships, battleships, and not just any battleships. Some of these ships, see if I can come down here, the Oklahoma. So we've got USS Oklahoma, Tennessee, New York. Uh, what does that say? Oh, that's a, this is USS Mercy. So that would have been like a, like a, um, not medicine, but like a, a first aid or, or like people who work in the field, uh, nurses and people who uh, help wounded soldiers and things. It would have been like a medical uh, based ship. Um, but then we got some others down here, like the USS Texas, the USS Arizona, and the USS California, all of which I believe uh, were, and most famously the USS Arizona, um, maybe were sunk at Pearl Harbor. So these are ships, and these photos were taken in the early 1900s, like the teens, 1916, 1918. And of course, they weren't sunk at Pearl Harbor until um, early, you know, early 1940s, <clears throat> whenever, like kind of triggering the US, getting involved in World War II. But finding old photos of these warships that are no longer around and that were involved in such a significant event uh, during a, a very uh, pivotal war um, is, is, you know, you don't come across them very often. I bought a lot of maybe 75 photos, all of which had to do with, the, with uh, this time period, Navy soldiers down in like Panama and other places and then a bunch of warships. I think I spent $42 on that whole lot. And here you see, if I go back to the beginning, these are 12 photos. So 12 of the postcards sold for $200 um, and I spent 40 some. So I've made $120, $130 after fees just from these and the rest of them are still left that I'll be able to uh, sell and make money on. This was a really cool piece. This is like a sterling silver etched, like a floral etched belt buckle loop. Uh, it's not necessarily a buckle by itself, but it is uh, made for your belt. Um, this probably weighed about 
10, 8 to 10 grams. So by, by gram weight, if you were selling it for scrap, it would have only been worth about seven bucks. But because it's, you know, it's an antique and because, uh, you know, it's functional, uh, it sold for $34. This is a really cool bottle. It's a blue, cobalt blue uh, bottle with a sort of a cathedral look here. Um, and I'll kind of scroll down so you can see what it looks like. It had a little bit of staining on the inside of it. I think that that can be cleaned out. It's a Carter brand bottle. You can see it on the bottom. You can see it also around the lower portion. Um, I've sold this bottle, this not this exact one, but ones just like it, probably four times in the last three years. And every time I sell them, I sell them between $60 and $80. I paid $8 for this at a thrift store. <clears throat> it's cool looking by itself, but I knew to pick it up because uh, I had already had experience with it. So, and just like before, I threw it up. It took about, it took um, one, just one auction cycle one bid, but $64, uh, so that was an $8 investment turned into $64. I hated to part with this. It's cool, but I'm not in the business of collecting. Uh, I do find jewelry interesting and fascinating. I've handled thousands of pieces of costume and fine jewelry. I've learned a lot about them. This was a really cool piece. Um, it was a little brooch. You can see how small it was, uh, just sitting atop my fingers there. But what you're looking at is an 18 karat um, sort of circular knot pattern with probably a 0.3 or so carat <clears throat> diamond in the center. And uh, there are collectors for this stuff. It's really cool. Um, by the gram weight, I mean, I think that this only weighed uh, about four to five grams. Uh, so if you're looking at 18 karat gold weight cost, like you're going to sell it for scrap, 18 karat gold is somewhere in the 40... Um, 40 some dollar range per gram so um this this was probably only worth about 160 to 180 dollars maybe something like that in, in gold weight but the diamond obviously has some value though not a ton if you know anything if you've ever tried to resell a diamond ring uh you don't get anywhere close to the value of what you would have paid for it at <laughs> you know at a jewelry store um but i'll have to say it had this really cool um enamel paint on it blue and some green and some cream color. Um, some of that had worn off, but this, you're looking at something that's from the late 1800s, uh, possibly uh, prior, you know, up as, as late as 1910. Um, $300, one bid. I made money on it. Would have liked to have made more, but that's the way it goes sometimes. This was, I was really uh, excited about this. I was hoping I would sell this next item for more like $140. And I think if I'd waited longer, I could have, but it was a jewelry box. I paid $6 for it at a thrift store um, locally. And uh, the thing that's unique about it, as you can see this kind of unique uh, design in the wood, uh, the green, this is Brazilian rosewood. Um, it was a beautiful box, had a nice liner on the inside, comes with the original key, a little skeleton key. You can see it has a little medallion on the top that's a monogram for someone's initials. Has some really good work on it, some mother of pearl inlay that has been carved. And then on the bottom you see, uh, it's upside down there, <clears throat> but it says it was refinished by somebody for someone else in 1972. But uh, Brazilian rosewood is an endangered wood that is no longer legal to harvest currently and sell. So anything that's gonna be sold now has to have been obtained or harvested prior to the date. And I believe, I may be wrong on this, but I think it's around 1969 uh, because I know that instruments. This is a this is a, regarded as one of the greatest tone woods ever used for instruments, like guitars, Brazilian rosewood. So you're not going to find a lot of Brazilian rosewood guitars or instruments post 1969, or at least a significant number less, because it was no longer legal. They were destroying the Amazon. They were destroying. Um, you know the the forests and the trees and so they uh they made some laws to help uh limit that so to find a piece of uh, a box like this made of this kind of rare wood it's also very beautiful unique um i turned a, a six dollar investment into 107 dollars um after just a couple of weeks so we just sold this <clears throat> this is like a hammer dulcimer uh, I say hammer dulcimer, I don't know if it's a hammer dulcimer, but it is a dulcimer type instrument, wood, uh, kind of an odd shape. I bought it at a thrift store for $40. 
I sold it pretty quickly for $200. That person got it and then they wanted a return because they said they couldn't keep it tuned. These tuning pegs at the top, they said, uh, were loose and would strip and they wouldn't hold. So I had to accept that return. So I lost that money, I got the item back. I then put in the description, hey, this sold once, this is the issue that they said they're running into. I don't know how to repair it, but just be advised. Um, and then I ran it on auction, so it sold for roughly 60 to 70 dollars less the second time around but still i put 40 into it so i'm still i still made 50 or 60 bucks after fees and the time and all of that would have liked to have not have to dealt with it the second time but that happens and that's a part of this business the next item is uh, just a, a very small piece of sheet music. It's only one page it would open. I have bought two or three large lots of vintage uh, and antique uh, piano music or, or uh, music sheets, and it's a slow burn. They do not sell fast. I've still got a lot of them left. I think I've pretty much made all of my money back on all the ones that I've bought, and I have a lot left over. So at any point in time, if I just decide I want to move it, I could throw in an auction for three or four bucks a piece. Um, you know, because it's media mail, it's it's going to be really cheap to ship. I can just pass that shipping cost on to the buyer. Um, but this was kind of a cool one. It's it's a jazz. Um, this is a jazz kind of uh, song. And so um, sometimes they sell because of the song, sometimes they sell because of the interesting artwork on the front of it. I don't know why this person bought it, but they did buy it for $14. This was another item that came from the same lot of toys as the first item I showed, that little um, Hot Wheel car. And this is the Slinky character from the Toy Story, uh, like the Pixar Disney Toy Story movies. It's the Slinky, and he's so small. He, again, he can fit in the palm of my hand. Uh, these were like unused toys. And so again, I paid $20 for that, sold the first one for $12 or $14, and I sold this one same day for $14.50. This was uh, just some postcards. I sell it. Buy and sell a ton of postcards. Sometimes I buy them individually and sometimes I buy them by the thousands at a time. I sort through them. I pick ones that I think have standalone value or value in small lots. And this was a small lot. These were Easter postcards. Easter is coming up and I imagine that that's why people were searching because the peak interest in a particular topic for postcards is right around when, you know, if it's a holiday, for example, right before or right around that holiday. So we just passed um, Valentine's Day and now we're looking forward to Easter and so you've got a couple of angelic figures here postcards two postcards $17 if I buy these individually I would never pay more than let's say two dollars a card for these but because I got these in a large lot I already had all of my money back before I sold these and they sold for $17 Sometimes in postcard lots or large lots of paper ephemera, which is also something I buy by the pound in large, large volumes of them, uh, you'll get these little die cut cards or little greeting cards from yesterday. Even if it's an old greeting card that somebody wrote tonight, here, you know, happy Christmas grandma or something like that, and they write their name. Even if it has that, if it's a unique enough looking thing, people will still buy it. And so this was cool because it was kind of set up like a die cut. It was, it was actually was die cuts, which are printed embossed pictures that they have then cut out. And oftentimes people bought them back in the late 1800s, early 1900s to put in scrapbooks. Um, and sometimes you find them glued into place and you can't really use them. But in this case, they had been made as die cuts cut out and then reassembled to make almost like a pop-up type, um, card to send a valentine card so you got this little boy he's holding something up um he's sitting this one was even damaged it wasn't in perfect condition part of it had broken off he wasn't attached anymore but he's still with it still sold for 14 dollars we talked about this on the What Sold podcast recently, and I and, and I showed that um, this is a sterling silver artisan made uh, bracelet um, that's kind of got this leaf pattern and then these really unique looking pieces in there. They're, they're cab, cabs, so it's convex on one side, flat on the other. They're glued. Probably there's a little metal post made underneath of them. They drilled a hole in the stone and they put glue. So they had, uh, the stone is there to keep it from wobbling and then the glue keeps it in place. Um, but these stones, 
you may or may not recognize what they are because they're very unique. They're actually opal, and it's a type of opal found in Mexico that are referred to a lot of times as fire opals. Um, I do have some that I've, uh, I've gone through them before. That's why I knew what it was in mineral, like rock and mineral collections that I've bought and sold. And uh, so these are, if you were to put a light on it, it would kind of light up bright orange. If you looked really close and turned it, you would still see that iridescent uh, kind of color change within it. But it's not that milky white uh, or that dark base like a black opal that you may be more accustomed to. Anyhow, it's unique. It's so rare. You can kind of see the color uh, flare there with some of the green and red. Um, really cool looking piece. Uh, if I were to have wanted to sell that locally, I probably would have polished it up. And uh, But it's tarnished here. That's fine. Uh, this was a $10 purchase. Sold it for $100. This is another uh, tool from that lot that I've talked about multiple times already. I got a bunch of these little hand ratchets that you would put a socket on and you could uh, tighten or loosen things. This was a Craftsman brand. It doesn't really matter the size of it or the brand. I am almost always selling these, like $14 is like the rock bottom that I would ever accept. And this one, I, you know, I'm just trying to move them because I've got so many. I probably got two dozen of these of various vintage brands. And they sell generally between $14 on the low end and $22 on the high end. This was a really, uh, you know, unique pair of earrings, hoop earrings. Um, and uh, they're sterling silver, can't see it there, but on the bottom it's marked 925. Paid $3 for this at a thrift store. This was also a tool that came from the tool lot. It's a torque wrench. It was unused in the original container. It still had the wrapping paper, as you can see. Right here, it had the plastic wrap on it. $20, I didn't mind waiting around for that. I had already made all my money back on that lot, so I'm just kind of blowing through these tools to move them. This was a surprise to me. This came in with a bunch of uh, jewelry that I was selling for someone else uh, to help them out. And it turned out to be an Eisenberg branded piece, which is a, a boutique, uh, higher end costume jewelry brand. And this wasn't exactly jewelry per se. Uh, it sort of totes that line. You can see on the back there, it says Eisenberg Ice and it has a patent number. You can look that up. Uh, I did not realize how valuable these things are. It's just a little hand held mirror in the shape of lips with some red rhinestones and they're just glass uh, around the edge but it's rare enough and that brand is collectible enough this thing sold for 245 dollars so if you're out and you're looking at costume jewelry get familiar with some of these brands these high-end brands um you know like christian dior and eisenberg and Traf you know crown trafari hattie carnegie um, Miriam Haskell, Juliana, d and &E, and the list goes on. But, but, but be familiar with these, know what their markings look like. And if you're not sure, take a picture of it, look it up. You'll be happy if you, when you find, because a lot of times pieces that ha are made by high-end makers, these thrift stores and antique stores where they don't know oftentimes what they have, they throw them in with all the other stuff. So you'll see a couple of pieces, two or three handful of pieces of jewelry that aren't worth 50 cents, and then right next to it you might have a $200 brooch. Uh, it happens all the time. This next one is a postcard that we sold. It's also a real photo postcard, as you can see. Um, and it says, uh, this was uh, among a lot of probably 50 to 60 postcards I bought, all from the same person, Dr. Keating. And he was a doctor at the Maryland Asylum for Feeble-Minded Children. It's what they, they call it there. But he, he was uh, sending messages out to people all over the country and even the world at different hospitals as a part of doing research on the population of patients that he was caring for and kind of getting sharing information and asking for information uh, so that they could serve serve their patients better. And so it was really cool. I paid $10 for all of these postcards. I have sold probably a dozen or more of those, all of them for more than $10 a piece. And this was uh, a good example of that. 1913 sold for $12. This is also something that I bought, uh, that I pulled out of a paper ephemera lot that I bought a bunch of things by the pound. And it had a bunch of these tiny little uh, cards in them. Um, not unlike the way that sports cards were made, uh, back in the day, certain products would have little cards, inserts in them. Um, they could be in like, like any kind, like a variety of types of products. Uh, you know of Cracker Jack having like toys in them, but cigarette packs would have little, you know, sports cards in them or other cards. And this was um, Arm & Hammer. 
uh, was the was the, uh, the manufacturer or Dwight Church and Dwight. There's Church and Dwight. There was, you know, there's a Dwight Soda. There's um, soda being like soda powder, not 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 something you would drink. Um, and there was uh, what are the other? John Player and there's a variety of them. But they had all kinds of uh, types of of content. They had animals and they had like places and they had planes and trains and various stuff like that. There's all kinds of things you can find. Actors and actresses of the day. But uh, I found they're quite valuable as far as like if you can get a lot of these. I And I got hundreds in, in some cases in some of these lots. And they're selling for between $8 and $12 a piece. And this is just a little nut hatch. It's not even in great condition. But they had different um, sets and series. So they would have like one of a hundred. And there are people who were trying to complete the set. Or they, maybe they just like the look of it. They want to put it up as artwork. I don't know. This was a big sale. Uh, anytime we get in really nice quality or heavy gold items, we know they're going to sell. They're going to sell fast. Um, that's why there's lots of gold buyers out there. But this was a necklace and a bracelet um, set. It was not very heavy. I'm talking 10 grams or less. But because they were a matching pair, because they were functional, because they're attractive, they're not necessarily a design that no one wears anymore. This is something people can wear now. 450, it was 10, 10, 10 grams, 10.8 grams, $450. Here's another one of these Maryland Asylum uh, postcards, uh, a postal card, a private mailing card. Uh, this is 1901, so it has a little picture up here of Bermuda's capital, and so this is one of those that he had sent uh, out to Bermuda, another country, and uh, this one sold for $52. So again, I paid $10 for 50 some postcards. This one, I've already, you know, got quite an uh, exponential uh, sale here. Um, uh, like, you know, money back in my pocket from that purchase. So that ended up being good, and I got several more to sell. This is a uh, pearl necklace, Tahitian pearls, black pearls. Uh, these would be considered more like a Baroque-style pearl because of the way that they are shaped. Um, and this one, you know, they were nice pearls. They do have an interesting clasp on them. This clasp is sterling silver, as you can see on the inside there. Let me find it right here, 925. So, you know, don't just look at the clasp itself. Sometimes you need to open it up and look at the latch and the things on the inside of it to see where the metal mark or the hallmark is. $60 for this. It took a little while, but I was happy with that because I got this in a lot of a lot of other uh, pearl necklaces, many of which had uh, 14 karat or 10 karat gold clasps, which also adds to the value. This is a sterling silver necklace. I thought it was really interesting looking. Uh, it's etched glass. It's etched like a dragon. It has blue uh, lapis. Is the uh, the mineral lapis lazuli or lazuli? I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and then some green stones there. I think that that's malachite. So you've got lapis, malachite is the blue. Or sorry, the malachite is the green. Lapis is the blue. Sterling silver um, on the back of I think on the clasp it says. Yep, right there. You can see it again. 925 sold for $50. I was happy with that. That's just a $3 purchase. Here we go with some uh, vintage ladies' watches. Ben Roos brand. We've got some rhinestones around. Sometimes these watches have diamonds or sapphires. So if you are going to dabble in this stuff, you should have yourself a little testing uh, instrument that can test for these stones because you don't want to sell something that has gold or platinum content and, and precious stones if you don't have a way of um, checking those. Always look on the back. In this case, um, it says... Uh, 10k RGP that's rolled gold plate so there is gold content on these and uh, they're nice they're functional these are automatic so they don't take batteries you just wind them and then they'll they'll be good for a day or so um, I took a best offer of $36 but I never pay more than three dollars a piece for these here were just some basic pocket knives not even good quality pocket knives not even good brands of pocket knives uh, cheap ones, but pocket knives always sell for me. I, if I have cheap ones that aren't real valuable, I throw them into lots like this. 20 bucks, it's a very quick and easy sale. I used to buy large lots of pocket knives that were confiscated by the TSA at airports. <laughs> I don't know how they do that, but they take them and then they would, I don't know if they had, they probably had a secondary group that would buy them in bulk from them and then they would resell them. And so I bought, you know, 50 pounds of pocket knives before and sold them off one at a time. Uh, I've not I've not done that in a while, but that was good because pocket knives sell really well. 
Here are some antique uh, spoons, wooden you know, kitchen instruments. Here it looks like a, 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 um, like a pestle from like a mortar and pestle uh, situation. A little, uh, just some stirring spoons and things. $20, not the greatest sale in the world, but when you buy little bags of those for two or three dollars, then that makes sense. Here is a pocket watch chain. I sell these a lot. I love getting them in. I love it when they're gold filled or sterling silver because they sell really well. They're functional. They're high collectability value here. This was not a, a precious metal. It was more like a brass. And it was, you can see some heavy corrosion here. Uh, not great condition, but I guess it was unique enough and someone wanted to use it. So $20. And I think I only paid a dollar for that. A couple of thimbles. I bought a little bag of thimbles for $2. Uh, there was a sterling silver one in there. I sold it and made all my money back. They had nothing into these. Uh, and these are not uh, sterling silver, but they do incorporate some mother of pearl and sort of like an inlay of a flower there. $10 for those two. Here were some charms, uh, like the, the, the shape of a woman or like a girl's head. And on the back, you see 12 carat GF, gold filled Elko brand. Uh, charms that can be used on bracelets or necklaces and they were gold filled so somebody bought them either to use or to harvest the gold $24 and that's the kind of thing that you get for 50 cents or 10 cents a piece and like a little bowl at a thrift store or things like that this came from one of the rock and mineral collections that I bought a while back I'd held on to these for a long time because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the stones myself to set in jewelry uh, and I still have some but I went ahead and sold three or four like this um, to the same buyer actually. So he bought one. He's like, do you have any more? And I was like, yeah. And so this one sold for $60, uh, just barely over a dollar a carat, which is really good for a, a genuine Australian opal. Um, but I sold f uh, three others. So I sold four um, rough opals to this same person. And I want to say the wholesale was somewhere around $240. And I think I only paid $100 for the entire rock and mineral collection. So four of these specimens out the door, made all my money back and into the profit. And then last up today, we just have a really unique pair of earrings. Um, these were in with, these are just, they look like costume pieces, but they aren't. The posts are 14 karat yellow gold. These are um, like freshwater pearls, genuine pearls. And then at the bottom, you have a, a triangular facet cut shaped um, citrine, which is a type of quartz, I believe, but it's just got this yellow uh, color. So it's a, it's a, it's a gemstone. It's a mineral. You, they use this in all kinds of jewelry. I don't usually see ones in the shape or this size. So quite nice. Um, I had two pairs of them. I still have one left actually to sell uh, identical ones. This one sold for $70. Well, that's all today, guys. Uh, thanks so much for uh, checking in and make sure you check out the What Sold podcast on your commutes to work or back, or you can go to the other YouTube channel. Check that out. Also check out Rusty the Reseller, Postcard Planet. And again, check with us next week. We'll have a new video for you. Take care.